Hi, this is Russell Sanner from teachertraininvideos.com. Going to show you how we can use Google Forms to create formative tests and quizzes. Uh, this has been around now for about two years. Uh, but what I'm also going to do is show you a couple of advanced features. A lot of teachers don't realize, for example, that you can use the grid feature. So we're going to focus a lot on how you give the correct answers to Google Forms so that Google Forms can check the student's work, but also the feedback that we give to the students as well. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so we're going to look at Google Forms today, but we're going to look at it from the, the, the point of view of testing, of actually creating quizzes that are marked by Google Forms rather than as a way of collecting data. So we normally use Google Forms for kind of surveys, for questionnaires at the beginning of a course, for feedback, for gathering data about students' study habits, etc. Or I use it a lot in teacher training as well to find out, well, what do the teachers know about technology? What technologies are they using? But we can also use Google Forms as a way of creating tests. So if we come up here, click on, obviously you need to be logged into Google through your Gmail account, click up here on your apps, come down to your drive, click on your drive, and we're going to click on new, and what we want to do is to click on more, and then Google Forms, okay? So we're going to call this a Google Form test, so we're just going to write the title in, always important to write a title, so I'm just going to put Google Form test so obviously just trying to show you that you can use it for testing um, this shows how we use Google Forms for testing okay now one little trick here is if you click here I think it's here it grabs the title and puts it in so that, that will always be the title of this particular form so we're ready now but there's one thing that we need to do we need to click here on the settings and come down to quizzes because we're going to actually make this a quiz it's a really important button I'm going to offer immediate feedback after submission to the students and um, respondent can see missed questions uh, again that's to do with the feedback and we're going to click on save so now we're ready to start to create questions. So every time we create a question, we need, of course, to provide both the answer and the feedback so that Google Forms is able to check uh, the uh, actual activity. And of course, what I'll do after creating the form is I'll actually do the form as a student so that you can see exactly how that works. I'm going to add a few tricks in here as well to make it a little bit in, more interesting for you. So notice I've got this area selected here and the first thing I'm going to do actually is add a video. So I'm going to click here and that will add a video. Uh, I'm going to search for the video so I'll always use the same one I use in literally every single uh, example that I do but it's just a video that I really like and one that I use a lot when I'm doing training around uh, presentations. If, if you've watched any of my other videos, you probably realize I use this video all the time. So I'm gonna click on this one here and just click on select. Okay, so I'm adding a video in because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask some questions about that video. Now, if you remember, we had the title selected. Whenever you click on a plus here, the item will always be added below whatever object you were currently selecting. So because we were selecting the title, then the video was added here. So the default question, the question that's always added when you start Google Forms, is, um, is, is actually still underneath. So now what I'm going to do is write a little thing here that says watch the video and answer questions below. And that's a good instruction to put because often uh, you just want to make it exactly clear. And another little tip is click here and center a line. If you want to make the video bigger, what you do is click here in the corner and drag it out and down. All right, just ignore that. It will resize once it knows how big you want the video to be. Now I'm going to add the first question here and I'm going to say, what does he drop on the floor? Okay, so question mark. Uh, and sorry, the best thing I can do here as well is to, or a good idea is to number the question. So I'm just going to put one there. So now I'm going to offer my options. All right. So I click here and I'm going to say a pen or pens because that's actually what he does drop. And the second one I'm going to put is books. Well, it doesn't drop books on the floor. And the third one is the computer. So I've put my three options in. Now, obviously, we're not just simply here thinking about gathering data from our students we actually want to make sure that we can uh, choose the correct answer so the next thing we need to do is click on the answer key so we've put our question in 
you now need to put the uh, answer in. So we click here, and the first thing that we need to do is say, well, which one's the correct answer? Well, the correct answer is pens. How many points are we going to give for that? Well, we'll give five points if you get that right. And then we now need to uh, add the feedback in, and we do that by clicking here. So you almost need to go through those three processes. I really like the way the feedback works. So incorrect answer, the, I can say here, no, the correct answer was pens. Okay, and correct uh, if they put the correct answer, say well done. Now, actually, you can even add something along with that. Now, I've never done this, but you can actually add a link to something or a video if you want them to re watch the video. Perhaps if they made a mistake, you could give them the video to re watch. Uh, I don't really see the point in doing that, really, because they've already got the video above. But just to say that the option is there, right? The first question's done. Okay, so I'm going to add another question. So click on plus. Now, again, we know that this is the current question that we got selected. So we click on the second one, and I'm just going to simply add in another question here and say, What uh, does he throw? He throws an object. Okay. And I'm going to put here book, computer, just keeping this really simple for you, pens. And again, we need to go through that process. Now, just to let you know this, just in case you didn't realize, you can actually add a little image to go along with any of these uh, options here. So people don't realize that you can actually add images into multiple choice questions. And I think it's drop down, just two types. Uh, one thing we're going to do here as well is change it from multiple choice to check boxes. Uh, I think we can still use, because obviously when you're working with uh, tests and quizzes, you can't use all the question types. Um, you can, you're a bit limited in what you can use, but I think you can use check boxes. So again, we're going to choose the answer key now, and the correct one to choose in this particular case is pen, is pen or pens. Uh, that's what he throws into into the audience. In fact, what I'll do in a minute is I'll change that to singular. Again, I need to add the feedback. Incorrect. No, the correct answer is pen. Okay, I could carry on if I wanted to here. He throws, sorry, a pen into the audience. And the other option is obviously well done oh, again you can write more feedback if you want okay it's kind of difficult for me to type at the moment I've got a huge great microphone sitting in front of the keyboard but anyway so that's two questions let's just do another one because I'm just trying to look at some of the options in terms of what you can do don't forget to choose the number of points I'll make that five points so again we've done that let's just do one more so I want to show you something a bit special when we do this third one. And what I'm going to do with this third question is, okay, simply going to ask uh, the question, what does he sit on? So a nice simple question, and you'll see in a minute why. Because I'm going to choose here from the multiple choice questions, short answer. Now with the short answer question, we need to choose the answer key to offer as many correct answers as we're going to accept so the, the user might input table but they might also input table without a capital they might input table with a dot at the end and they might input table in lowercase with a dot at the end so I'm going to accept all of those as correct answers so this is always the problem when you add in a question where you're asking the user to add in a specific question a uh, specific answer sorry that you really need to make sure that you offer all the possibilities um, and mark all other answers as incorrect so I'm going to just choose that so that is a short answer question that's also another possibility now let's just do one more example before I actually show you what the form would look like to a student. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it up a level and do something a little bit more complicated. So again, making sure that we've got this area selected, I'm going to click on plus. And this time I'm going to choose quite a complex type of question. So I'm going to choose what we call multiple choice grid. And what I'm going to do here is say, are these countries north or south of the equator. So this is kind of a little bit more tricky. I'm gonna put a row. So we're looking at rows of countries and I'm gonna put Spain, all right, Italy. I'm gonna write uh, Chile 
and I'm going to write, um, let's put Canada. Okay, so we've got four, that will do. Now I need to put the uh, columns, and I'm going to have north of the equator, south of the equator, or on the equator. Now we actually haven't put any countries that are on the equator, but that, that's fine. Now I need to put the answer key. Now the answer key here is going to be a little bit more complex because Spain is north of the equator, Italy is north of the equator, Chile is south of the equator, and Canada is north of the equator. So notice that I need to do that. And then of course when I edit the question as well, um, actually do I think I've already put the answer key in. There isn't any feedback on this particular one. So we've added in here a very different type of question. And uh, now we're going to actually do this exercise as a student and see how good it is and whether or not it works. One thing I do need to do again here, and in fact to check all of them, is the points. So I'll give five points for each of these correct answers. So uh, that might be something that I've been missing out on all of them. So to just have a quickly come back and show you how easy it is to come back to a question. Just click on it and then add your points. One, one final thing, because people always ask me this, Russell, what about if you want to delete a question? We'll just click on edit question, and then you can delete the question here, okay? So let's just come back to the question here. That one's all got the points in it. Right, so we're done. We've got our four questioned quiz. Uh, we've told Google the answers. Now let's uh, see how it works. So when you want to share the quiz with your students, the easiest way is to click on the send button and come to the link here and it's a great idea for example to share the link on Edmod or on Moodle that's normally what I do uh, so just going to copy that link now what I'm going to do is actually log in on another browser and uh, make it easy let me just line it up so it sits there let me just paste in this link so I've just pasted in the link there is our test we got a lovely video that we have to watch so I'm very familiar with this video anyway but just to show you that it works Okay, so then I can watch the video, and then I'm going to put that he drops pens. Oh, uh, that's, uh, what does he throw? He also throws pens. And here I'm going to put, so what does he sit on? And I'm going to write table. And then here I'm going to say that, so I'm getting all the answers correct. Okay, so I'm going to just put Spain, Italy. In fact, let's get Chile wrong. So let's put all of the, and let's get Canada wrong as well. So now we're going to submit this. And what we should get is to be able to view our score. So this is exactly what the student sees. So come back here and we got 25 out of 35 and we can see, uh, and we can see the feedback and we can review and see the feedback and we can review this one and see the feedback and here we can also see where the correct answer should have been which should have been Canada was north and uh, Chile was south that's quite nice that I've uh, the way that it gives the feedback I've not noticed that before uh, so it actually just shows you the ones that you got incorrect and gives you the correct answer that is how the new well it's not new now it's been around for a couple of years uh, how we can create tests from formative tests using Google Forms Hi, this is Russell Stanoff from teachertrainingvideos.com. I hope you found those uh, that video interesting. If you want more videos about Google Forms, probably the best section to click on is Google Tools. Lots and lots of videos about all different things that you can use uh, with Google. If you'd like to sign up to my newsletter, I'm not putting it on the front page anymore. It's here on the right hand side on every page. And if you'd like to keep up with all the new videos and any online courses I do, then you're welcome to just uh, join the newsletter. A couple of sections that you might find interesting, uh, Russell's uh, five minute blog, just very quick videos that show you different technologies that you can use in your teaching and learning the top 12 videos, the most popular videos on the website. And if you really want to keep up with what I do, then please follow me on YouTube because I add videos onto YouTube that you won't find on the website. And thank you very much.